Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I know who is here. And I say that in the most loving way. I know who is here. I know who is listening. I know who is reading. The clock as you know it does not exist on my side of the veil. Your reality is not mine. I sometimes speak of things that are in your future that are happening for us now based upon the potentials that are the strongest. But we may interact, the two of us, because the strongest bond that we would have would be that which you would call the love of the Akash. The bond comes in the number of lifetimes the very soul core that you have that I know and of course the friend that you are when you're not pretending to be a human long before there were planets and galaxies we romped together in the universe you and I difficult to explain things that are beyond explaining Well, the attribute of that which is the creative source is that it always was. A force that has no time at all, always is. Time is then an attribute that is placed upon it all through the intellect of the corporeal human being that exists in three dimensions. And they will look at everything and they will say, indeed, when did it happen? When will it happen? Where might it be? And all of those questions don't make sense on my side of the veil. If you had an idea of what you've really been through long before you ever got here on this Gaia, you'd know what you're in for. You'd know the bridge that you're about to cross, you would know of the good things that you will enjoy the next time around, perhaps even this time around, and that are in store for your children. You'll know that the legacy that you have left here with your imprint will be felt in the galaxy. <laughs> for all time. It's that critical. And all of these potentials were only potentials as I sat before you not long ago, 22 years ago, and opened the mouth of my partner. And he struggled to say the words, I am crying a magnetic service. <laughs> and so we get down to the basics. Uh, in the lectures, my partner describes the things which are outside of your reality. We, we speak to him in terms that are multidimensional so that you will then be able to bring yourself to a realization that you must push the envelope of what you truly think is real. And that by pushing that envelope, it expands an element of your personality that you don't even know you have, which truly is the creative source, it will take you into the areas you don't know about yet. <laughs> and I laugh because it's clear to us and a mystery to you. But the mystery starts to clear as you push on the walls of your room of reality. All of these metaphors mean that at some level, human being, you have to sit with yourself 
and you have to analyze what it is that you have to change. We bring up difficult subjects that are personal. The title of this short channeling is similar to the ones we've given before. Recalibration of self, number three. We start asking the questions which are really basic. Are you going to be able to move forward? Is there anything stopping you? Are there any blocks? How do you know? Can you simply go for it? Here's the premise. Like everything else that you have ever done in your life, there has to be some acknowledgement of preparation. Can you start to mine the Akash, as we have told you, you may do with pure intent? Yes. Can you start pulling in things for yourself which would slow your aging? Yes. Can you start actually changing your life in a way where you could start seeing a peaceful human being where perhaps there isn't one now? Yes. Can you pull in solutions to problems that you don't think are solvable? Yes. But you're going to have to prepare. And now we get to the hard stuff. And the psychologists will look at it differently than we will. But you have to start taking stock, as they say, of who you are. And you have to look at basics very, very strongly and ask yourself the difficult questions. We've got a list. And it's five deep, this list. If you look inside yourself, are you ready? And you will say, yes, I am. And I will say, probably not. <laughs> I want you to look at the masters of the planet and I want, you to, I want you to really examine their lives. And I want you to say to yourself, am I ready? It's time for you to assimilate some of the attributes that have been taught by all of them. This is not that difficult, dear one. It starts with understanding, recognition, and intent. Here's the list. What are you afraid of? Number one, fear. What are you afraid of? And you'll say, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm ready to go. I want to tell you something. You're afraid of many things that you're not acknowledging and you might not even know about because it's buried and hidden in your Akash, but it affects you every day of your life. It's why so many of you are dysfunctional. You carry around things from the past that etch themselves into a place in your behavior that makes you move the other way when you see something coming you don't like. That's a fear. And it may not be on top, but it's a fear. And so that's the first thing. Does that change who you are, what you might do, and where you might not go? And the answer is, oh yeah. And you'll say, well, wait a minute, crying, and I'll say, you wait a minute. I'll address that in a minute. <laughs> Number two, ego. Well, crying, you don't have to worry about that. I settled that years ago. Really? <laughs> Let me ask you something. When you're with other light workers, what do you talk about? Do you sit and listen and revel in the beauty of what they have to say or do you talk about what you're doing? <laughs> do you talk about how you've worked on yourself? Do you talk about your processes? It's a form of ego, dear one, if you didn't know it. Perhaps you're proud of how much you've accomplished in your processing of yourself. <laughs> but you can't hard, hardly wait to blurt it out to everybody. 
So I'll give you an exercise. Next time you go to dinner, next time you go out with friends, here is your task. And find out whether it's difficult or whether it's easy. Don't say anything about yourself. Zero. Unless ask. This is going to tell you what your habit is. There are some of you who will throw it out onto the table for everybody to hear whether they want to hear it or not and that is the ego of a light worker proud of what they've done and the masters of earth did they do this and when they gathered around with others did you hear them talk about themselves and the answer is no they sat at the feet of those that came to see them and they listened and taught and fed them and loved them. What about anger? And you'll say, well, I'm, I don't get angry often. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> what do you get angry at and why? What's the trigger? And why is it there? What was the trigger for the masters? And I'll give you the answer. They didn't have one. <laughs> Not really. Not really. They had disappointment. And the things that disappointed them were the things that disappoint, disappoint so many of you. War disappoints us. Inhumanity disappoints us. Unbalance disappoints us. What are you angry at? What is it that will trigger that in you? And you know what it is. If you've got anything that will always make you angry, you've got something to work on, don't you? And you'll say, well, wait a minute, crying. You see, this is not my fault. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, wait a minute. I'll get to that. Number four, reaction. What do you react to? What is it you can hardly wait to, to pop in your two bits? Hmm. Perhaps it's political. Somebody's saying something. You've got something else to say. Your reaction. What triggers you? Not anger. Reaction. I'll tell you what one reaction is. Defense. If somebody says something about you and it's not true, blatantly not true because of their ignorance or their misunderstanding, do you react? Do you want to set them straight perhaps? Do you want to tell them the right way perhaps? And how much of that did you see in the masters that walked this planet, dear one, when they were accused? You see him fly off the handle and give him a lecture about what they were doing wrong. The answer is no. There were no triggers. There were no triggers. There were no reactions. Did you notice? The masters were at complete and total peace. Somebody say something political. You better work on that. Well, wait a minute, that's not my, my, my fault. You see, crying because I'm going to say, you wait a minute. Are you in judgment of anything, number five? Anything. When you view others, what's the first thing you see? And you'll say, I'm not a judgmental person. I didn't ask you that. What do you see? What do the masters see when they looked at anyone? They see God inside. That's the first thing they see. No matter what the situation, no matter where they are, no matter in what context, somebody cuts you off 
on the, on the freeway. Do you see the God inside them? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What's your trigger, dear one? We make assumptions. And the human being has theirs. And so now I'll let the human being talk. And they'll say, well, you don't understand. I came in with these things. And I've been trying to unlearn them all my life. And yes, I know that I'm judgmental. And sometimes I get angry. And sometimes I react. And I can't help them. my politics. It was one of my parents taught me. And it's ingrained in my mind. I can't help the fact that I do certain things the way I do them. Because that's who I am. Cry on. I'm a human being. And I'm not really a master. And so you got to cut me a break. Because <laughs> these are human attributes. And I'm going to tell you it's about time that you understood what they are. These are engrams, a template of how you came in that begs to be changed. Begs to be changed. And every single excuse that you will give, I will tell you the masters will look at you and say, you don't have to have it. Why don't you get rid of it? You make the assumption that it's there forever. You paste it upon your persona. And that is the way it is. And you're wrong. <laughs> and so what I am telling you in this short channel, dear one, is that every single thing on the list, which we're going to go through again in a minute, has been given to you to alter. And in the alteration of these things, that recalibration of your basic personality, will get you faster than anything. It will get you there faster than anything to become more quantum. To move into your life, into the things you really want. You clearing these boulders away so you can move forward in all the things we've been teaching. If you don't clear the way, it's going to be harder. Psychiatrists and psychologists God bless these human beings for they work with other human beings and try to help them in their lives. They're dedicated to it. Absolutely dedicated. The interesting thing about psychologists and psychiatrists, and most of them are unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what brought them to the puzzle to help humanity. For they see it in themselves. They know what it feels like. They study it. They correct it. They move forward. They teach it. It's universally known. But if you ask them what they do, they will say we work with a static model of human behavior. We try to undo some of the things that the human being has done. We look at their past, we try to put the band-aid in it through conscious awareness, through realization, through practice, through repetition. A 12-step program if they need it. Getting rid of addictions, fears, all of these things based upon a static model that never can change. And that, my dear human being, is the difference between what was and what is. For now we are telling you something, and now we go through the list yet again. Is that everything that has occurred in your life is rewritable. You cannot change the past, but you can change how you react to it. <laughs> the very things that you would use as an excuse of why you do the things you do will then belong to another human, not you. For you will start to rewrite the actual engrams of your personality trait 
to more aptly represent the masters of history. And you're going to find that as you begin, it won't be that hard. What are you afraid of? All of the fears that are subconscious that you carry in are based upon past life experience. What do you avoid? What do you not want to do? All of these things, some of them unexplainable to you, can be cleared. And we've given the process before and you begin with active asking. And then you start practicing these things and walk into the places you don't want to walk into. You actively begin to steer areas that you would never go to. If you're shy, you start talking to people without being asked, how are you? Pretty soon you realize it's easier than you thought. Pretty soon you stop steering away from things. Because that which is the innate in your body, the body intelligence starts to cooperate with that desire for you to erase the fears that are subconscious and they will disappear. Guaranteed. You're not going to cover them up with a program. They're going to go away. Because you are going to rewrite the information that used to be there with new information that you're going to create. The ego will never be a problem. You will be proud of yourself in a way that is appropriate and you never have to tell anybody how proud you are. Because spirit knows and is proud. And isn't that good enough? That the love of God carries you from place to place and says, God bless you. We are so proud of you. We love you. And that should be good enough that you never have to tell anybody anything about what you've done. Unless they ask. There's no desire to spill it out. And you won't want to. Never again will you open the conversation of here's who I am and here's what I did and here's what I've done. Perhaps even under the guise of self-help, here's how I've helped myself. You won't have to because you will be complete without it. <laughs> now this doesn't fit everyone in the room but it fits some of you. And some of these things are hard to hear. Anger is a product of the past. You get angry because something triggers the anger. The thing that is in you which responds is information. You're programmed. This life, the one in the past, doesn't matter where it is, you're programmed. And you know it because it makes you angry. You actually respond emotionally. Your chemistry starts to change. You have to admit that's pretty profound. How would you like to remove the trigger? If you rewrite the information, you'll never be angry. Oh, you can be disappointed. And you know how you can tell? There'll never be the rage chemistry. All of that which makes your heart beat faster, which makes you swell up, which makes your, literally your mind block itself, will go away. And there will be no anger trigger. Anger will be something that is not one of the attributes of your life. And you'll start realizing it over a period of time. Disappointment? Yes. Sorrow, empathy, compassion, yes, but not anger. So many times we've said in the past, can you reach the point where a human being can point at you and call you names and accuse you of things that are not accurate 
and you can look them in the eye and the only thing that you will feel is you're sorry they're having a bad day. No anger. And no reaction. Number four, no reaction. Can you reach a point where the things that you would normally react to, you don't anymore. They carry no control. Reaction is an automatic response to a program in your attribute of personality that you can't control. You automatically defend. You automatically speak when you hear something that you don't like. What if you could rewrite that Ingram? Oh, you may not agree, but why do you have to respond? Why do you have to defend something? It's another person's idea of you. It's not you. What is there to defend? When God loves you to the degree we do and sees you as a divine human being walking this planet perfectly in lesson day by day, isn't that good enough for you? If a person accuses you wrongly, you can be disappointed. You can be compassionate and not react. Do you? You don't have to. What kind of judgment would you put upon those who would false accuse you? There are certain words you might have used in the past. <laughs> How do you judge those that, that are in ignorance or, or perhaps uninformed and will go and do certain kinds of things? What is your judgment of those who don't believe what you believe? And how do you see them? This is one of the biggest, dear ones, believe it or not. How does God see them? How does the Master see them? Millions of human beings believing in certain spiritual things that you don't necessarily ascribe to. And what do you see in them? In their zeal, what do you see? I'll tell you what the masters see. And let this be your test. <laughs> Blessed is the human being who finds God anywhere in any way. For that is appropriate for their path. Do not judge the one who does not find God like you have found God, old soul. For whatever they find is good enough for their path for now. Celebrate the fact that they even want to go there and find a creator inside in any way they do. If they want to climb steps and crawl and cry, if they want to assign it to a prophet, they are looking for the same thing that you've looked at and they're in their own path in their own time. Look at them with compassion, understanding, and joy. That's how God sees them. Old soul. Five things that we ask you to look at inside. We're getting down to the basics, are we not? Every single one of the five. You start clearing these things. If any single one of these is out of balance, I'll tell you, dear one, you're going to have trouble moving forward. And we have not said this before. These are the attributes we want you to work on, on yourself. And when you have accomplished even a partial correction of any of these, even the intent beginning, it's almost like a door opens. And the things that you've asked for begin to settle. I wouldn't tell you these things if they were not accurate. This is the system at its best. Practice that which is mastery. With the examples that you've been given over history. And start to change who you are. 
in order to move into who you will be. And that is going to change the earth. <laughs> and that is going to change the earth. <laughs> and this is the task of the old soul today. And so it is. <laughs> <laughs>